Welcome to this introduction to the customer returns process in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. The video will describe the standard processes for creating a return order, receiving and processing the returned items, and for how to finalize the process. Let's look at an example. Lisa, the customer service representative at Contoso, receives a call from customer 2004 Valley Hotel. They bought three sets of speakers, item number 1103, a couple of weeks ago. But after having put them to use, they have realized that a cone in one of the speakers is not working. They want to return the defective speaker. Lisa acknowledges the problem and accepts the return and goes ahead to create a new return order. She opens the return orders list page for created or new orders, clicks new return order. She selects the customer number and enters various customer reference information. She makes sure to enter the site and warehouse where the return item should be uh, sent to and she selects the recent code that indicates the customer's cause for returning the product. In this case, it was a defective speaker. She finally verifies with the customer that they will be able to return the product within the deadline. After the return order header has been created, Lisa uses the Find Sales Order function to find the right customer invoice line and creates a return line based on that. Using the Find Sales Order function to create the return line ensures that the line references the invoice and that price and cost information is transferred correctly. It also validates any serial or batch numbers being returned against the numbers on the invoice. She also attaches a note to the return line about details of the problem. The return line now has status expected, indicating that an arrival is pending. Lisa finally prints and sends the return order to the customer and asks them to include a document or the RMA number when they ship the defective speaker. In this particular case, the defective product was not crucial to the customer's day-to-day -day operations and it was not relevant to send a replacement order in advance. If that had been necessary, Lisa could have used the new replacement order function to send a replacement item upfront on a separate sales order. In the previous example, we saw return lines being created with the find sales order function. This adds a reference from the return line to the customer invoice and ensures that cost, price and tracking dimensions are consistent with the information on the invoice. While that is the recommended and most common approach to creating return lines, the return order also allows for entering lines directly for both products and for goods identified by a sales category only. For example, let's add a line for the same product as used before, but without a reference to an invoice. In this case, we want to be sure that the return cost price is correct and we want to change this to 700 in this case. We can also add a line for a product that's identified by a sales category only. Let's pick the category speakers. In this case we don't have product master data and we need to enter uh, some more information here ourselves. That includes the price and possibly a descriptive text. 
notice that uh, products that are identified by a sales category uh, do not uh, carry any return cost price as those products do not enter inventory. The defective speaker has arrived at the warehouse and Sammy, responsible for shipping and receiving, opens the arrival overview form to find the arrival among the expected arrivals. Assuming the customer included the IMA number with the shipment, Sammy knows that he should search the returns list and he can use the IMA number to identify the arrival. After having found it, he uses the start arrival button to create an arrival journal. The company process is for all returns to be inspected by the quality control department. Inspection happens in context of a quarantine order, so Sammy makes sure that a quarantine order will be created for the returned item upon posting of the arrival journal. Looking at the open return orders list, Lisa, the customer service representative, can see that the return line has status quarantine and she knows that the returned item is being inspected by the quality control department. After having investigated and verified the defect, the quality control department determines that the problem cannot be fixed by a simple repair operation, so they complete the quarantine order by assigning the disposition code for replace and scrap and ends the, uh, the quarantine order. Lisa can now see that the return order line has changed status from quarantine to registered and she can see from the disposition code that a replacement item should be provided to the customer. She knows from her conversation with the customer that he just wants a straight replacement, so she uses the replacement item form to specify that a quantity of one of the item 1103 should be added to a replacement order. After having entered information about the replacement item, Lisa can go ahead to generate the packing slip for the return order. In addition to generating and journalizing the packing slip document, this process creates the replacement order based on the information just entered by Lisa and it performs the actual scrapping of the defective item. Scrapping an item incurs a loss corresponding to the inventory cost of the item. The return line now has status received. At this point, the processing of the return order is almost complete. The remaining steps are for the Accounts Receivable Department to generate and post a credit note for the return order and to deliver and invoice the replacement order. The replacement order is a separate sales order and it will be processed and invoiced as any other sales order. Sometimes an error happens during the processing of return orders and other orders and if arrival registration has been performed incorrectly for the wrong qu quantity or with the, the wrong disposition code, for example, the return order includes access to the registration form to fix this. In this case, a return order with quantity of 10 or minus 10 has been registered and the full quantity has received the disposition code 11 corresponding to credit. Now we actually want only 5 registered with disposition code 11 and another 5 registered with disposition code for scrap. Lisa selects the line and selects the registration form. In this case it is a cancelling of registration so she clicks auto create and it will now cancel registration of 10. However she wanted to cancel registration of 5 only so she changes quantity to 5 and posts this. This results in the return line being split into one line with minus 5 and status registered with disposition code 11 and another line with status expected and no disposition code. She can now go ahead and actually register 
the arrival of these remaining five directly from the return order form without going to the arrival overview. She uses the registration form again and says, I want to add the disposition code 61 for scrap. I want to do that for the full quantity and I'll post the registration. We now have one line with quantity minus 5, disposition code 11, and another line also with quantity minus 5, disposition code 61. This completes the walkthrough of the standard processes for entering and processing customer returns in Dynamics AX 2012. Thank you for listening.